Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our live stream of morning prayer from St. Michael and Holy Angels Facebook page. Today is the 30th of March. It is the spiritual Shout of Baptist holiday. And our worship begins on page 33 in your Books of Common Prayer. We are in the fourth week of Lent. <coughs> The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. So as we welcome those now joining in, let us say the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power through your Spirit. May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Let us say the Venite. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. <clears throat> we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. And so welcome to those now joining in. Let us take a moment of silence to allow God to call to mind those things which we have done that were not pleasing to him. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, to forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us have our office hymn, hymn number two. <coughs> In your CPWI, Awake My Soul and with the Sun, CPWI number two. <clears throat> so, welcome to those now joining in. Awake my soul and with the sun, thy daily stage of duty run. Shake off the sloth and joyful rise to pay thy morning sacrifice. Redeem thy misspent time that's past and live this day as if thy last. 
Improve thy talent with due care, for the great day thyself prepare. Let all thy converse be sincere, thy conscience as the noon declare. Think how all seeing God thy ways, and all thy secret thoughts surveys. <clears throat> we can lift up thyself, my heart, and with the angels bear thy part, who all night long on weary sin, I praise to the eternal King. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above angelic hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We now have our psalm, <coughs> our psalms for this morning's office. Psalms 101. And 109 verses 1 to 4 and 20 to 30. <clears throat> Psalms 101 and 109 verses 1 to 4 and 20 to 30. Psalm 101 begins on page 598. I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing praises. I will strive to follow a blameless course. O, oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with sincerity of heart within my house. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the doers of evil deeds. They shall not remain with me. A crooked heart shall be far from me. I will not know evil. <clears throat> Those who in secret slander their neighbors, I will destroy. Those who have a haughty look and a proud heart, I cannot abide. <clears throat> My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. And only those who lead a blameless life shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house, and those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. I will soon destroy all the wicked in the land, that I may root out evildoers from the city of the Lord. Psalm 109 this is 1 to 4 and 20 to 30. Hold not your tongue, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful, is opened against you. They speak to me with a lying tongue. They encompass me with hateful words and fight against me without a cause. Despite my love, they accuse me, but as for me, I pray for them. They pray, they repay evil for good, and hatred for my love. But you, O Lord my God, O deal with me according to your name. For your tender mercy's sake, deliver me. For I am poor and needy and my heart is wounded within me. I have faded away like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh is wasted and gaunt. I have become a reproach to them. They see and shake their heads. Help me, O Lord, my God, 
save me for your mercy's sake. <clears throat> Let them know that this is your hand, that you, O oh Lord, have done it. They may curse, but you will bless. Let those who rise up against me be put to shame, and your servant will rejoice. <clears throat> Let my accusers be clothed with disgrace and wrap themselves in their shame as in a cloak. I will, give, I will give great thanks to the Lord with my mouth. In the midst of the multitude, I will praise him because he stands at the right hand of the needy to save his life from those who would condemn him. Amen. Now these psalms are what we might call imprecatory psalms in which the, the writer is asking God to, to deal with his enemies <coughs> and in Psalm 109 Verses 5 to 19 are left out, and when you get a chance, you can read them, and you will see why they have been, why they have been left out. And we know that some people use psalms for all, say psalms for all kinds of unsavory reasons, and. Remember that even though we have, we may have any, well, not enemies, but we may have people who are persecuting us. We are not the ones to exact revenge on on what on the wrong that we perceive that was done to us. That is God's department, and so yes, this yes, the Psalms are in the Bible. <coughs> But it does not mean that we have the right to wish those things on, on anyone or to even, or wish yet, pray, pray them on anyone. And so maybe that is the reason that that section of the psalm was omitted or it was it is put in brackets and it is it's optional for us to say. So we don't want people to get the idea that this is the way that we deal with our enemies or these are the things that we must wish upon them. Remember, it is always God's job, it's always God's department. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. And so we are invited to, you know, erase these kind of thoughts and feelings of wanting to do these, or even wishing these kind of things even our, on our enemies. Jesus said, we must pray for them. Pray for those who persecute you. Don't pray for them. Don't pray on them. Alright? That's the difference. So, we now turn to our first reading <coughs> from the book of Genesis chapter 50 verses 15 to 26. Genesis chapter 50 this is 15 to 26. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the, the crime of your servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? 
even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I will provide for you. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. <coughs> so Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, who were also born on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So Joseph made the Israelites swear, saying, When God comes to you, you shall carry up my bones from here. And Joseph died, being 110 years old. He was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> So we turn to the Benedictus on page 40. We will get back to talking about the Old Testament reading in a minute. The Benedictus on page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised a woe to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath we swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. <coughs> our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 11 to 26. Mark, chapter 8, verses 11 to 26. Welcome to those who have recently joined in. <coughs> the Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Surely I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, Is it because we have no bread? And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, 
Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us say the canticle, the Lord's servant. On page 52, the Lord's servant. <clears throat> he was despised, he was rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, <clears throat> excuse me, as one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Ours were the sufferings he bore, <clears throat> Ours the torments he endured, while we thought he was being punished, struck by God, and brought low. He was pierced for our sins, bruised for no fault but ours. His punishment has won our peace, and by his wounds we are healed. We had all strayed like sheep, all taking our own way. But the Lord laid on him the guilt of us all. <clears throat> and so let us talk a little bit about the reading from Genesis. So this is the last chapter of Genesis and <clears throat> We see that Joseph's brothers are still harboring some guilt, apparently, because even after all that Joseph did for them, and even after all that, that went on, when after he revealed himself, and they wept on each other's necks and so on, they still were not sure whether things would continue to be as they were now that their father has died and so they well there's no we, we have not seen we, we did not see where Jacob gave this instruction that he said please forgive them or if I want to believe that if that was true Jacob would have told him Joseph that himself because remember when Jacob was dying Joseph went to him went to his bedside and they had a long conversation and it is usually at these bedside conversations and these deathbed scenes that people usually bear their heart and their souls and they tell 
other people everything that they, they need to know because um, they don't want to take these things to the grave and they think that people should know. So if, if there was any time that Jacob would have given that instruction to Joseph, it would have been then. And he would have given that instruction to Joseph himself. I don't think he, he would not have relayed that to his brothers. So I think this is a, in other ways, they have not changed. They are still the same, it, it, it seems that they are still the same scheming that of young men, men that they have always been. Uh, only Joseph has changed, evolved, and matured. But be that as it may, Joseph is past that. We see that when Joseph made himself known to him, that was when everything came out and he was able to release all his hurt and pain. And, but apparently they had not yet done so. And this is the thing about forgiveness and repentance. And this is the, it shows us the importance of actually confessing our sins, actually saying it out loud, say, saying them out loud, <clears throat> or at least bringing them to, to our minds. This is why we allow people time during the act of penitence to try and remember those things so that we can bring to mind those things that, that we, that were not pleasing to God. So that when you bring them out, when you confront them, and when you actually say them, that is when the healing begins. Because once you say them, it means you have put them out there, they have come from your mouth. It means you have admitted, you can finally admit to yourself that you did these things. So it is only now that his brothers are confessing and finally admitting to themselves that we did these things. We did you wrong, and we harmed you, we sent you, we sold you as a slave, and they're not even, they, they, they haven't quite got it, gotten to it yet because they're still saying it as if it's coming from their father Jacob. But we have to trust that they're on their way to, to getting to that point where they actually confess their sins. And this is more or less the first time that they actually um, voice it, um, other than when it first happened and they were deciding what they were going to tell their father and all that sort of thing. So this is an important um, teaching on confession and how important it is to actually voice our sin, voice our wrongdoings, or even if we don't voice them, bring them to the, the, front of, the, the forefront of our mind and the forefront of our thinking and articulate them. Articulate them so that we can get them out, so that we can own them and finally say, well, yes, I, I did this, we did this, this is what I have done, and, and then is when the healing can begin. So, so all this time, even after Joseph uh, invited them to come and live in Egypt, he, he sent them home with the grain, and he sent them to, you know, tell, told them to come back and live, and, and all that. Even after all of that, they, they still had doubts, they still had guilt, it was still inside of them, and it is only now that they are able to bring it out and hopefully be assured of Joseph's forgiveness of them. And Joseph weeps again because he, he, he is free. He is free of his pain. And so he is able to, you know, show his feelings, but they still have not yet come to that point. So we turn to our gospel reading, and we pick up the story where Jesus has just fed the 4,000, and uh, he is going away as, as usual after he does a 
he goes away to, to pray and to commune with the Father. And the Pharisees are arguing with him, asking him for a sign from heaven. Now the thing about a sign, a sign is, signs are always there, signs are there. We don't have to look for signs. What we have to do is we have to read signs. So if you are, uh, if you think you are lost or you are looking for a particular place, what you have to do is you read the signs that are there. You might you read the street sign, you see what street am I on? Okay, so now that I know where I am. It is not like if something has to come and tell you. What the Pharisees want is for Jesus to do something and then they interpret it how they feel. That is not what a sign is. A sign is not up for interpretation. A sign points to one thing only as opposed to a symbol which can be interpreted in other, in other different meanings. But a sign points to one thing. When you see a street sign, that is the name of the street. It is not another street. It is that, that is the street. So if you think you're on, you're looking for Frederick Street, but you're on Henry Street, and you read the sign and say, oh, I'm not on Frederick Street, I'm on Henry Street. Then you go to Frederick Street. You don't say, oh no, this is supposed to be Frederick Street, so the sign is wrong. No, the sign is telling you what is happening, and this, you read the sign. And this is the problem with the Pharisees. They were not able to read the signs. They were stubborn and they were blinded by the fact that they did not believe in Jesus, so that anything he did, anything that he would have done would not have convinced them. Because they had one thing in their, their mind, that he was not who he said he, he was, and that he was not of God, and that they didn't believe in him. So nothing he did would have convinced them. So their asking for signs was only to say, if he had shown them something, would have been to discard it and said, well, no, that you, you, you can't be who you say you are because that is, that is not the sign you're looking for. So they are the ones who are blind. And then Jesus had this conversation with his disciples. They have just been fed or they have just witnessed another miracle of multitude feeding and they forgot to bring bread. And, and just because Jesus mentions yeast, they think he's talking about bread. But he's trying to warn them of the trickery of the Pharisees and the, the scribe and Herod. But they too misinterpret what he's saying. And so the whole story, the whole this whole reading is about there being Everyone is, is, is misinterpreting, everyone is blind, everyone is not understanding. And so we go on to the blind man. And this, they came to Bethsaida. And the scripture says some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. In other words, we don't know the man was protesting that he, he didn't want anything he didn't, he didn't need Jesus or he didn't want or he didn't want Jesus to touch him or anything like that but they begged him to touch him and I can't we can't help anytime you read a story we can't help but comparing it to the one later on with Bartimaeus who calls after Jesus when he hears that this Jesus was passing he calls and shouts after him so much so that they try to shut him up and keep him quiet and he's calling after Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And eventually Jesus calls him and he asks him what he wants to do, what he want, what do you want me to do for him? Bartimaeus says, Lord, I want to see again. And Jesus does not touch him. He does not touch him. He says, go and, you know, your faith has made you well. But this man, they begged Jesus to touch him. 
and it can only be that he didn't want, he didn't, you know, he, he didn't ask, he wasn't calling after Jesus, he didn't ask for anything, and so they, they thought, they felt that he needed some healing that Jesus can help him, so they took him, and Jesus, he touches him, he, he uses the, the ancient method by putting spittle on and saliva and rubbing it in his eyes, and he asked, now this is a very strange question. <clears throat> Can you see anything? Now, in all the healing that we have known Jesus to have done, did he ever ask anybody, okay, can you walk now? Okay, can, can you hear now? Can you hear me now? Or, okay, when he raised people from the dead, well, obviously, that, that was obvious. But this is the first time that we hear, you see Jesus asking someone after he has um, done a, a, a ritual of healing, can you, can you see anything? And it's almost like if, you know, it's, 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 it may sound in modern day terms, it just sound like an experiment that Jesus was trying out this medicine, you know. But we know when Jesus heals, it is complete. And so this also um, supports the, 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 the theory that everyone in this, in this, this, this account is having trouble recognizing, is having trouble seeing who Jesus is, even the disciples, right? So he's asked, can you see anything, right? And the man says, well, I look, I look, I can see people, but they look like trees. Now, obviously he knows what trees look like, or else you would not have been able to say that. Or right, you can't not know what something is and describe and, and name it and define it. Alright? So he knows what a tree looks like. But he also knows that trees do not walk. So, in other words, he is still not seeing properly. He is still focusing on whatever he thinks is happening and not what it's supposed to be there. So, and, and that is the message for us. When God is trying to, in the first place, do we want to be healed? Do we want to see properly? Do we want to be whole? And because the people had to beg Jesus to touch this man. So clearly he wasn't moving in any kind of way to, 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 to get healing, right? So do we want to be healed? And this is why Jesus always says or complains about the lack of faith. Because this man, he, he knew his attitude was, it seemed a bit nonchalant. Can you see anything? Yeah, but you know, they look like trees walking. How can people, how can trees walk? So, to, in other words, we have to open our eyes. We have to focus a little harder. Or we have to, either that or we have to allow Jesus to heal us completely. Or we have to trust Jesus to heal us completely. Or to, to, to bring us out completely out of our situation. Because trees cannot walk, so that cannot be that cannot be the reality, right? That cannot be what is happening. So trust Jesus to bring us into to, to clear a clearer vision of things. Trust Jesus to bring things more directly into focus for us, right? And don't trust our own interpretation of what we see. So Jesus had to touch him again, and this time he says, well, this is if the man does not follow Jesus, whereas Bartimaeus was able to see clearly and he followed Jesus, Jesus does not invite him to follow him. Um, it says to go home and, in, and don't even go into the village, just go straight home, because maybe he needs some more 
not physical but more maybe emotional and spiritual healing to complete the process and so what is the message for us how are we letting jesus fix us how are we letting he just heal us are we letting him heal us completely or do we still need a second opinion do we still need him to come back and ask us do you see anything are you seeing properly is this you know so help let us allow jesus to do what he, he does because jesus heals when he, he heals completely and this is the first time that this that someone that we see that someone was not healed completely and it's not because he couldn't it's not because he didn't have the power but it's because the man was not focusing properly he was not focusing on the right thing all right or he was not seeing he was not looking at what the, what the reality was all right so just some things to think about the Lord be with you so let us turn to page 42 as we see the Apostles Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. New suffrages be. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us till its close, 
Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are saving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit, that we may seek in everything to know your will, and knowing it may gladly perform it. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So as we continue in prayer, we continue to pray for the world, for the church, and for our country. We bring before God the conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. We pray for peace. We pray for a change of heart for those who perpetrate violence, for those who want to dominate others, and for those who want what others possess. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for other parts of the world where there is conflict, we pray for other parts of the Middle East, part of Africa and Latin America, wherever there is war, strife. We pray for the victims of these conflicts, those who have been made homeless, who have lost property, who have lost loved ones. We pray that God will intervene and deliver them out of their situation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of those who have died because of war and, and violence. We pray that you will grant them eternal rest. We pray for our own country in the war against crime and violence, the war against the importation of illegal guns and drugs into our country. We pray an end to corruption. We pray for accountability and transparency from those in leadership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those young people who are angry, who act out their anger in violence and crime. We pray that they will encounter your love. We pray for change in their hearts. We ask that you make us instruments of your peace, so that we may be the ones to demonstrate and to show your love to them as a church and as individuals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are marginalized, for those who are abused, those who live in abusive situations, those who have no one to protect them and to stand up for them. We pray that you will intervene in their situations and that you will protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those students who will be writing the SEA tomorrow, where we ask for a spirit of calm for both them and their parents. We pray that they will be able to write the examinations safely. We pray that you will help them to recall everything that they have learned and that they have studied. And we pray that whatever the result, that you will help them, you will keep they will continue to get the support of their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, 
hair operator. We continue to pray for an end to the pandemic and we pray that as we prepare to lift all restrictions that we will continue to be vigilant and disciplined and we can to be mindful that the virus is still among us and that we still need to protect ourselves and those around us. We ask you to help us to be responsible and to be considerate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all leaders, the leaders of our church, that your Holy Spirit will continue to inspire them and that they will be obedient to your promptings, that you, you give them the strength to take the direction that you would like the church to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have given their lives to you, all those who are Christians, that they will be obedient, they will be humble, and that they will show your love to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for those who celebrate birthdays and other special anniversaries at this time. We ask that you continue to bless them, give them health, strength, and prosperity. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls who have died. We ask that you would draw them more into your joyful presence. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, that you will strengthen them and comfort them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to don't want to miss anything. We thank God with the, hold on a minute, we pray for unity in our diocese as we work together to bring the message of the gospel to all people. something else we pray for those who are traveling and we ask God's protection upon them we continue to pray for Reverend Mark Samuel and we ask God to continue to heal him and to bring him to wholeness Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So before we end our act of worship, let us sing hymn number 500. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. CPWI 500. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came. 
Sing to Jesus and thy trine of the black giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morning shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I look to Jesus, and I found in him I saw my son, and in that light of life I walk through troubling days are done. So we pray for those who are, or those children who are on vacation at this time. We pray that you will protect them, Lord, you will keep them safe wherever they go, wherever they go to spend their vacation, wherever they go on outings and gatherings, Lord, I pray that you will protect them, keep them safe. In Jesus' name. Amen. We may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we want to thank God for the contribution of our spiritual Baptist brothers and sisters, for all that they have done for us in the way of worship and other areas of us of our society. So we thank God for their contribution and their witness, and we pray that God will continue to strengthen them in their ministries in this, in this land. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us at St. Michael and All Angels for the service of morning prayer. Do enjoy your day. Whatever you do, be careful and be safe. And we will see you again this evening at 6 p.m. for evening prayer. Thank you and have a great day.